All right, guys. I hope you had a great day. This fight. All of this mess that was going on. But we're going to address the elephant in the room. You know, I'm not one to overreact or jump to conclusions. You're going to hear a lot of people are going to talk all kind of garbage and say this and say that. That's just the kind of people they are. Um, but it's, it's all good. I'm the type of person where, you know, I've got to know exactly what I'm talking about. I got to, before I come up with some type of opinion on something, I've got to do a little bit of research. So that's why it kind of took me until now to kind of put the pieces together. Plus, I, you know, we were trading, which is our number one priority. Uh, so, you know, I had to put this on the back burner until I was ready to come out. But the big question is, you know, is sure trader closed? Are they closed for good? Um, are they in some kind of trouble? You know, well, what I know is this. According to what they say, according to what DOS says, they are suspended for five days. And then after that fifth day, they will be open. So kind of to go through the timeline, yesterday about almost five o'clock, this pops up. And normally you see this coming in toward the end of the day to remind you that uh, about the, if you, um, you know, the be at two to one by 3.30 and all of that, you know, you get this in the morning to say if you don't have 500 equity, you can't use margin and all of that stuff. Um, so this pops up. And I thought that was odd. So I read this and it said, we're told by the share trade administrative personnel to disable access to the DOS platforms effective today until Tuesday. They don't have any other instructions regarding this and to contract contact sure trader. Well, all yesterday, it's ironic that this notice popped up after everybody was gone at SureTrader, you know, they were closed. So I go to log in, you know, to log back in, I logged out and I logged back in. And this is the message that come, that came up the same thing. And nothing at SureTrader or anything. So you know, this morning we get, uh, where is it? So this morning I log on to the, the sure trader website and this is what we get. The securities commissioner of the Bahamas have notified the firm that pursuant to these sections of their security industry act, um, their Continued registration, that's Swiss America Securities Limited. Continued registration under the act is suspended for five days, ending Tuesday, December 24th. And they gave these sections. So I go, I look up the Securities Industry Act. I go through the sections. And so here's section 133.1. And it says if the commission considers it in the public interest to do so, the commission may upon settlement with the person or after hearing order a person, a class of persons or all persons to cease trading a security class of security or all securities. And F section F impose conditions or restrictions on a registration or suspend or revoke a registration. Now, they didn't revoke their registration, they suspended it, which means they cannot conduct business for five days. Okay, then, then we go down to three. 
If the commission considers it necessary and in the public interest to do so, the commission may, without providing an opportunity to be heard, make an order under subsection one other than an order under subsection 1H, 1, or U that is effective for not more than 15 days. So they could have suspended them longer, but they gave them five days. Now, when you read this, the first thing you're thinking is they screwed somebody over because it's talking about in the public interest to do so, and it's all about the public interest. So I went back and I looked and did some more research and I found over the course of their history just like all other well I wouldn't say all other brokers but just like a lot of other brokers they tend to be late filing their documents they tend to be late reporting certain things that they're required to report by a certain date in the last instance was back in July of 2018, um, where, let's see, here's the facts. At all material times, the defendant was and remains a security securities firm duly licensed by the commission. All right, during May 2016, the commission conducted an examination for cause and discovered breaches further outlined in the report. The issues revealed in the report primarily concern SASL's operation and the failure to ensure full compliance with provisions of the act, including KYC issues, maintain, maintenance of books and records, and failing to notify commission of material changes. So basically, they just failed. They were failing to comply. And going through this, they pretty much got a slap on the hand, a slap on the wrist. All right, considering who supposedly owns this, this doesn't surprise me. So, you know, they, they went back and forth and they pretty much acknowledged respond and accept responsibility for his non-compliance which is subject matter of the report and this ensuing settlement. Well, they consider non-compliance a conduct contrary to public interest. So it's not, I doubt very seriously if it was that it has something to do with one individual person or a group of people where fraud was committed. If that was the case, they would not be suspended. They would be shut down. Amen. And it, they would have been shut down a long time ago. One of the big uh, misunderstandings is that um, offshore brokers are not regulated. You know, they are regulated. They're just not regulated by the SEC here in the United States. But they are regulated they do have to meet certain um, certain rules, certain laws, because that commission is designed to protect us. So they are being regulated. The problem is they didn't take, and what my thinking is, now I don't know for sure, but based on their history of noncompliance, meaning not filing certain papers when they were supposed to i think they got tired of slapping them on the wrist and they just up and suspended them but what's bothering me and what's upsetting me a little bit is the fact that we're not getting anything from sure trading we didn't get an email we didn't get anything saying that, hey, this is what happened. You know, we're sorry. We regret that this happened or anything. We just get this message at the top of their website. And people that didn't get to eat their little mail on the platform 
last night when they logged in today, all you got was this little thing saying that Sear Trader asked DOS to disable access for the next five days or whatever. So, I mean, it's a little, to me, it just shows that the person, whoever's running it, whoever's in charge, really doesn't know how to run a business or how to, you know, really handle their customers. Um, and it's a little unnerving. Now, I've been with Sure Trader since the beginning. When right after they first started, that was the only one that we really could go to. And believe me, I've been through some crap with these people because of their lack of customer service. You know, they only had two or three people working. They had no idea they were going to blow up the way they did. And they blew up. They had trouble with customer service. But slowly but surely, they started getting better. And, you know, right just recently, just recently, I started noticing that we were getting, um, I started noticing that instead of just getting SMAT, because I like to market, you know, I, you know me, I market in and market out. I'm not, you know, I, I don't care about all of that. I'm not trading stocks that have huge spreads, so I'm not worried so much about slippage. But I started seeing, um, you know, IB. And on the, um, the route. And I'm like, what is that? What is that? And so it comes to find out they started, um, offering direct market access. And this was a big issue with people wanting to go with SureTrader because they didn't have direct market access. It's funny because a lot of them didn't know what the hell it was anyway. It's just something they were repeating from somebody. But now they were offering direct market access. Everything, you know, it started to look better and things started to look more in line with a regular U.S. broker. And, you know, all of a sudden this happens. Amen. So I still, I personally feel because of the suspension, the length of it is probably that they were tired of slapping these guys on the hand and they decided it's time to let them know that we are serious and we're not playing games anymore. So that's kind of you know what I'm that that's what I'm seeing right now. Now I you can't know for sure until you get um you know you we'll never know for sure until we get some type of um statement or something confirming it you know nothing i've been on the the um commission's website in the bahamas they don't have anything on it they probably don't post this stuff for probably weeks out maybe months out but there's nothing um, posted on there but i honestly feel that if it was something dealing with fraud or anything like that, the punishment will be a lot more severe than a slap. I mean, even five days could be a slap on the wrist, but because of the way they handle this, you're going to have a lot of people overreacting and panicking and they're going to want their money back. So they're going to want to withdraw. And so that's going to cause another issue. So I think what they've done is 
you know, kind of dug a deeper hole for themselves by not addressing this up front. Because I know the administrators had to know what was happening or what was going to happen. And they probably didn't tell their employees. They probably kept it to themselves and waited to the last minute. And, but I think they knew far enough in advance for them to put out a statement and let their clients know um, what was going on. So that's my issue. You know, I'm, I really feel uncomfortable about the way they handle this. You know, that, that's my thing. So time will tell, you know, I'm going to wait and see what happens the next couple of days. You know, and like I said, I can only speak to what I've dug up on um, the, the research that I've done. And that's all I'm ever going to speak to. But, you know, I've got money over there. I've been an advocate from the beginning. You know, I've never had any trouble getting my money out. Never had any trouble wiring out or anything. Um, way back when, in the beginning, when I first tried to wire out, I didn't read how you were supposed to do it, and it's stupid. How you you could only get your initial wire out. You could only get however much your initial wiring in was, and then you could only get it back the way that it was sent and then you could get the rest back through wire or whatever and it was just crazy but um you know ever since then i've never had an issue but i never kept uh, too much money over there i always wired out and i always put it in my bank and when i was able to open up um that speed trader account and I, that's the one I'm using now and gonna use it until we figure out what's going on but I did that and I told you don't swing trade and this this is it's not something that and it wasn't that I thought something was fishy with the broker it's just the fees and and how they what they charge it just didn't make sense to swing trade in there so, you know, if you stuck to those things, then you shouldn't be, you know, too hurt. But I don't think, I think your money is safe. You know, unless something else comes out. I think if there was an issue, they would be shut down more than five days. And it would be a little bit different. And pretty much what they're charged with now is the same thing they were charged with back in 2016. And, uh, and I guarantee you they came in and checked again and found them not in compliance with their paperwork and did a little bit more this time than slap them on the wrist. So just wanted to give you my thoughts on... Um, this whole situation, like I said, the best thing to do is wait and you just got, you don't have no choice but to wait and let this thing sort itself out. And then we find out exactly, you know, what has happened. Oh uh, yeah, direct market access, it doesn't route faster. Um, it, it's not slow, but if you're working in the house route, like um, with Speed Trader today, I'm I'm using the house route. With IB, I just use the house route. It's I'm not trying to pick any route. I'm not trying to get rebates back. I don't really care. That's not important to me. What's important to me is getting in and out quickly, so that I don't have any trouble getting the best entry I can get and making my profit because i always tell you if you know how to trade commissions don't mean anything when i first started back in 99 uh, i think i paid 25 dollars one way 
just to make a try. I wasn't day trading. I was I would do swing trades or attempt to do swing trades, but commissions were pretty high. So now when I started back, I thought this was great. So not a big deal. Oh, this is what I was going to show you. Um, like this is what I was, I started seeing, you know, I never look at the route. I never look at anything. You know, the only thing I'm looking at is the time, the price and the quantity. That's all I really have up. None of this never really mattered, but this is what I started noticing. And that's what made me, you know, ask the question and found out that they were offering direct route, direct routing through IB. But my excitement was was short lived. Um, so those of you that were here yesterday, or that went into class, you got to see this. This is the Deja Vu uh, Roku all day hold from yesterday. Uh, practically made the exact same amount. Um, let's see, we made 30, 36, 72, 68, almost. 3700 bucks and we almost made 3700 bucks on the lap on the the one from last yeah. week so it was pretty good day yesterday um tried to make it today but it's roku just wasn't trading in the right range it didn't have the catalyst that it had yesterday so, you know, just like last week, I, I didn't get in when I like to get in. You know, pre-market is when I like to get in. And, you know, we had the, the news hit. We had the big sell-off. But at 8.30, we, we open up, and that's when we're looking and building our watch list and all of that. And I can't watch this and do that at the same time. So it wasn't until we got settled that I was able to kind of glance at this and see that we were breaking down and I could manage my risk a little bit better. And just typically an all day hold. And basically what you do is you just, you get in and you set your stop, you set your profit targets and you walk away. And so I'm just day trading. I'm not even paying attention to this. Now we brought this up after lunch and I was streaming this in the room after lunch because it wasn't anything else going on. But, um, you know, typically it's a set it and forget it. And then we, you know, close it right at the end of the day. But it's crazy because we closed it and then about 30 minutes after the close, we're making new lows. See, how low did it get? It got down to um, 123 or something like that. 122.25 is the low um, pre-market this morning. So that, that was crazy. But this is the type, this is the strategy that got me, that segued me into swing trading. I was never comfortable um, walking away because I felt like I didn't have control. Even though I couldn't control what was happening in the market, if I'm not there watching it, I just felt like I didn't have control over it. So this helped me lose that control to kind of walk away from it. So I, I would watch it on a one hour chart or 60 minute chart and that would keep me from overreacting because if you watch it on a five minute chart, you'll overreact. Uh, so you can't do that. But that was the deja vu trade from yesterday. And today, this is um, TWLO. This is the one from the day. Only stock we traded all day. Uh, only one from the watch list that had the halfway clean setup. Uh, we had the big, we tried to push up right before the open and we had a big sell off candle at the open. 
Here we open, try to push up, and fail. And remember, you know, we've gone over each one of these candlestick formations in the class. Because the building blocks for this day trading class is being able to read price action, learning how to read price action, understanding what, what story each candle is telling us so that we can make the most educated decision. Because remember, once we get in, all we're doing is sitting back waiting for our targets to hit, whether it be our stop target or our profit target. Thinking is done once we get in. So we're sitting and kind of waiting for it to hit. And this is going to help us determine you know, what's going on. So here's a five minute opening range low. And it's when we broke it, we got in and made the first cover. Now, actually, this actually was a positive for me because I went to click the um, cover button as we were crossing the 100. We got a quick dip, and I actually got a good 10 cent slippage on this. So this, this was a... a <laughs> This doesn't happen often. Usually you get the slippage when you're stopping out. You rarely get the, the slippage now, but that was good. Um, next target was 113.50. We had this huge dip down, and then that was it. And we know, when we talk about this all the time, what these tails are telling us. And then what we need to look for after that. And so... You know, once we, I started looking at this price action, you could sense the momentum change. So it was time to get out. So we got, we got out here and it actually pushed up and it started to look like we were going to flag here. But I got in looking for this break and we came really close to, to me getting stopped out here on my max loss stop. Losing this support, all of this support, if we lost it, I was done. Now we closed below this, this candle opened, and we had a flash dip here. And when it, it had a flash dip, and then it started getting bought up. So it was showing, if you're reading watching the price action, watching the candle form, looking at the two minute candle, as this candle was printing, you would see we were not showing any signs of dipping just yet. So this candle printed, then this candle opened, we started to sell off. Had we made a lower low, I was done. We would have taken it off. It didn't make a lower low here. It came really close, but it didn't make a lower low. Another flash dip. It it sold off. This was solid red. And then it just got bought up and kind of closed toward the highs. And so we just held this this whole time. And you can see this was a it wasn't a really easy trade to deal with, but you can see it just kind of stair stepped its way up. Stair stepped its way up. And the minute it hit my target, the damn thing fell back to earth and stopped me out at break even. But that was it. You can see this candle, it ran up. It made a lower high. This candle made a lower high. We just started running out of momentum. And then here comes the rollover. I wasn't shorting into this. Not going to short into all that support. And we sat here and sat here and sat here. And I was in that mentor session and I was waiting for this to crack. And then all of a sudden we get this huge candle. So like I, and, and I typed this in chat. I don't know who, how many of y'all were still here. Y'all was at lunch, but I had to vent my frustration on this. So I had to wait for it to bounce. And then once it bounced and it broke the lower of this candle, um, that was it. 
And there's, all this was was reading the price action on the rejection. And it kind of let me know that, hey, we are, we may be headed down. And even though we, every subsequent red candle, we had a little pushback, we were just stair stepping down. Hit the first target here through 114, but we kind of put in a base here. This is kind of where it hit over here. We kind of put in a base here and then it bounced. But you could feel it, just like we've been learning the last couple of weeks. We we sensed the momentum shift. We didn't even have to wait for this thing to confirm anything. The price action confirmed it for us. And so if you notice, we started, you started with the roadmap to success that gave you the fundamentals, the foundation, and you focused on just technical analysis just basing your trades on the technical levels on the chart. Now we're moving into reading price action, really understanding what each candlestick is telling us. What story is that candlestick telling us? Because it's a representation of the sentiment of the buyers and sellers that's in, that, in this stock at the time. And so we have to be able to read it and let it tell us what, is likely to happen now is it like everything else is not a hundred percent accurate but it's accurate enough to where it's going to put you in the right place about 80 90 percent of the time you know whether you make money on the trade is going to depend on follow through and your ability to execute but reading price action is probably the best technical analysis tool you can have in your toolbox. And we always say your eyes, your eyes are the number one tool that you have. All right, so we wrapped up this day. Unfortunately, I can't add this to my 5K account because it is being held hostage by SureTrader. So, but we'll keep trading with, with Speed Trader and I'll keep taking the all day holes when they present themselves in um, IB. And you probably noticed that our commissions are significantly lower than if we were trading um, Sure Trader, but you know, doesn't matter if you're making money. Search the, your commissions won't mean anything if you're making money. They only matter when you're not. That's when it starts to sting. So that's going to wrap this recap up. So I hope you guys got a good understanding about where I stand and what my thoughts are with SureTrader. As I find out more information... Um, if things come about and my sentiment changes, you know, I'll update that, but that's where it lies right now. So let's have a good rest of the day. See if we can lead a market with a smile on my face. <laughs>